Beleza. Hello, hello. Get started here in a minute. I almost feel like we should just change the official start time to five after because no one shows up until then anyway. I know the first time I'm like actually on time without the overlapping meetings always. <laughs> there is a value to giving people a quick chance for like a bio break or something. Yes. We were so close to having Sasha here. Hopefully he's just debugging something. All right, well, Massage back. how about we go ahead and kick this thing off? Um, so for today, I only put on two, what I'm hoping are relatively small items. And we'll see if they stay small items or if they turn into lots of discussion. But the first one on the list that I had was a request for Tomble support inside of the platform struct which I didn't know what to make of this one. My knee-jerk reaction is we're not generating Toml in any of our stuff, like any of the outputs and anything in the spec is always JSON. But this is coming from the container D folks, it sounds like, where they're looking to use this when they're parsing their files. And we don't even have YAML support in here. It's just JSON for everything we do. Does anyone else have opinions on this or is it just something I haven't even seen yet and no time to think about yet? Um, well, this is just for Serde, right? So that they can um, store it in an interstitial format. I don't see the reason why we couldn't add Toml or YAML here. It wouldn't actually affect um, the encoding yeah. for image spec or distribution spec. Yeah, it doesn't affect our encoding. It's, it's just kind of one of those things of little features like this that are very specific to external implementations that have nothing to do with the spec itself. It feels like one of those things where you you start to add one, and then you'll get twenty other people saying, "Oh, add ours too." I think that's sort of, um, <laughs> unfortunately, that's a Go problem, right? If this was an open API spec, it wouldn't people would be able to generate their own trivially. Um, right? and, and 
in a way you can copy this exact code into your own repo and then copy between the structs is just not pretty. Yeah. So that's out there for people to look at. Um, there is a pull request sitting out for this if folks have opinions one way or the other on it. Um, but I figured I would raise it up because it's just something we haven't dealt with before. The other item on the list um, that I had, I think it was in this one, comes in our conformance code. Maybe it wasn't in this one. Okay, he's doing a skip for the warning. Um, Ram Kumar, I think a couple of things with this one going on. This was yours, wasn't it? Yeah. Did my mouse just die? Okay, my mouse died, but everything else is working. So let me change batteries on this side. If anybody else wants to chime in on this, feel free to. The general concern I had while I'm getting myself back together in here is warnings from the conformance. I don't know if that would show up anywhere for end users to look at. And so is there value to having a warning inside of the conformance check versus it's either an error or it's something that we didn't test at all. And then there's some kind of positive user feedback when they're looking at the conformance results. One more time, sorry, Brand. I didn't get that part. Yeah. So typically when people are looking at the output of the conformance, they are looking at the web page, right? They're looking at the site of all the people that have a conformance result of one way or another. And that web page is just saying pass fail along with you know what tests were run. And what we're looking at for some of this stuff is saying, well, we're just going to not pass or fail. We're just going to give you a warning for some of these things. And so we don't disable the check, but we just say it's um, it's it's just kind of a warning in general. Pull up. Um, we've got the conformance repo, right? This is the output. This is probably more what we're looking at here. So if I'm looking through here to say any one of these things that ran, I can see that, hey, they ran all these tests and green passed. Um, things are working. There might be some others. I think we have one down here somewhere. Yeah, some others that said, hey, I didn't run a test on content management or push. So I'd, I know that the tests they ran and on spec version 1.0, that they passed these two. And these other ones, they just didn't even run. Um, it's not a fail. It's just they didn't even run it. So it gives me positive feedback of what happened there. If we say that we're going to start putting warnings in there, there's nowhere in here we're giving warnings back to the end users looking at these results. That's only for the person that runs the test itself directly. Right. So the the, the language in the spec, so we, we uh, generate warnings for things that are as marked as should. Um, so it's not really that the test per se has failed. And uh, so uh, as uh, the test as it stands now, when we give the feedback, it is mainly for developers who run this test and they get this warning. It's up to them whether they want to fix it or not. Yeah, so my our reaction there is, do we need warnings or for saying, hey, it's just for the shoulds? And users don't need to care about that. It's only for maintainers. Do we care about that in general from the team? Does this seem like the right way to go? I think there was another attempt. I don't know if it was on this one or the other PR, Ram Kumar, um, 
where you had specified like a thumped, um, thumped print line or something like that. So at least with the G skip, I think this gives a little bit more visible. So this feels better than me than one of the other attempts. Yeah, the, the output of this is much nicer. Uh, I'm trying to get a, so when you do G dot skip, what happens is it skips anything past this. Uh, um, the advantage is that it's nicer, the output. Whereas if you want something to execute at past this line, we need to do something else. And there is a way to do it from uh, in Ginkgo, except uh, all of those symbols are under internal and they are not exported out. That makes it much harder. That's the problem. But but I can I can uh, I can try to colorize it a little better maybe. So. If we're thinking just for developers, we don't care to propagate this up to end users anyway. I'm fine either way with this one then. Overall, I'm just happy to see these things getting progress. So, a lot of appreciation to see you leading the charge on that one. Sajay? Yeah, I like the warnings. Honestly speaking, if we ask somebody from the registry to kind of like get this to get the report published, they would probably run this and see this. Um, the pass or fail is probably more like a, a public view. Uh, okay, this registry is okay. We don't, with a bunch of warnings, it doesn't make sense on the pass fail side. But it is good to know that whoever is running this test is from the registry and they would be interested to see these warnings. That's that's kind of what I thought. So yeah, those were the only two things I had today. Did anything else pop up while I wasn't looking? No. Um, you didn't want to put your uh, empty descriptor descriptor empty JSON that on the list, or the empty descriptor empty JSON? It's sitting out there, right? Um, it's ready for review, I think. That was as of just last week, right? Were there any questions on that one that I've missed? Or was that, that was over an image spec, wasn't it? Yeah, Sasha, I think you've got the the only response so far, which is the blocking response. Um, but after you posted that, I, I did go through and change. Okay, um, I thought I was un unlocked it. Let me check. Yeah, because you want us to go from filler to OCI empty, and so I've done that and a few others. So as of today, Filler is gone. Everything says empty value. And the JSON, well, it, actually the go line. Let me just click on down to, is it the descriptor, was it? Yeah, the go line says empty JSON for the descriptor. So this is what everybody was asking for. Just need people to now vote and approve it. Or let me know that I missed something. Uh, does this peer need any further discussion? Uh, are there any blockers on this? Yeah, I don't have any blockers. Uh, if anybody else wants to approve as well, or uh, give some feedback, that would be helpful. All right, so that's all I have from my side. Anybody else have items you want to talk about? I'll put this on the agenda say we at least discussed it.
Everybody just want 45 minutes back today. I'm good with that too. Going once, going twice. Cool, 45 minutes back. We're getting through these quick now. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Cole. Yes.